Hi, my name is Boris. You might remember me from such videos as how to find the area and normal to a parallelogram. Today, we're going to look at the following question. So we're asked to use properties of complex conjugates to show that if alpha is a complex root of this quadratic equation with the coefficients a, b, and c being real, and that's going to be very important later, we're asked to show that the conjugate of alpha is also a root. And then we're asked another question, a follow-up question, whether this actually generalizes to high degree polynomials. So in particular, is there something special about this being a quadratic equation? Would it work if there was a three here, for example? So we'll talk about that later. Okay, so the way we solve this problem is actually going back to the definition of what it means to be a root of an equation. And for alpha to be a root of this equation, it means that if we substitute alpha in, it satisfies the equation. Okay, and we also need to show now that basically if we replace alpha with alpha conjugate, we still satisfy this equation. So the way to introduce conjugates is to conjugate both sides of this equation. So we, what we get is a alpha squared plus b alpha plus c equals to zero, and we conjugate both sides. And now we're going to use the properties of complex conjugates to simplify this. So first of all, the conjugate of zero is zero. The other property we're going to use is if we have sums of complex numbers and we take the conjugates, we can first take the conjugates and then take the sum. So in particular, if we have two complex numbers, z and w, and we take the conjugate, it's the same as first taking the conjugates and then adding them together. So if we apply this formula to this particular situation, we get a alpha squared conjugate plus b alpha conjugate plus c conjugate. And as I said, the conjugate of zero is zero, so we just get zero. Okay, here we have a product of numbers. So we're gonna use another property of complex conjugates, which states that if we have a product of two complex numbers, and we need to take the conjugate, again, we can just do it one at a time. So first take the conjugates, and then take the product. So if we apply this formula to this situation, we get the conjugate of A multiplied by the conjugate of alpha squared plus the conjugate of B multiplied by the conjugate of alpha plus the conjugate of C equals to zero. Okay, and now comes probably the most important part, and that's the fact that because A, B, and C are real, the conjugate of A, the conjugate of B, and the conjugate of C is just equal to a, b, and c. And this is only true because they're real numbers. In fact, this result is false if we don't assume that a, b, and c are real. Okay, so because a, b, c are real, we can now say that this is the same as a conjugate of alpha squared plus b conjugate of alpha plus c equals to zero. Okay, we're almost done. This is almost like substituting the conjugate of alpha into here, except here we have alpha squared conjugated, and we need the other way around. We need to say we want to have the conjugate of alpha squared. But luckily, again, there is another rule about complex numbers, which we can use here, and that's the fact that if you take a complex number, raise it to some power, and take the conjugate, that's exactly the same as if you first conjugate and then raise it to this power. Okay, so now if we apply this rule to, we only need to apply it to this coefficient here, so then we get a conjugate of alpha squared plus b conjugate of alpha plus c equals to zero. And that's precisely what we get if we substitute the conjugate of alpha instead of x here, instead of substituting alpha, which by definition means the conjugate of alpha is the root of this equation. So we can say now, therefore, alpha conjugate is a root. Okay, so the next part of the question asks, does this generalize to higher degree polynomials? So was there anything special here that only worked because this was a two? And I hope you can see that the answer is no. None of the rules here are used relied on the fact that this is a two. We could have easily had ax cubed plus bx squared 
plus Cx plus D equals to zero. And this proof would have worked exactly the same. Nothing would have changed. We would have used exactly the same rules in exactly the same order and come to exactly the same conclusion. So the answer to this question is, does this generalize? The answer is a big yes. <laughs>